Chocolate cake, please, to go. Hey, beautiful, what's this two pieces of chocolate cake routine every day? I've been here almost a week, and every time it's the same thing. Either you're nuts about cake or you got a boyfriend. If I was your boyfriend, you wouldn't have to buy me no cake. You better make up your mind. I might be moving on next week. How about it, beautiful? Somebody else got our bench. Oh, been waiting long? No, it just seemed that way. Here, open it up. I start. Oh, me too. Mice? I couldn't wait. <laughs> I got the little ones in there for you. Thanks. Lunch is on me tomorrow, and I'll be here first. Mm -hmm. Today, I brought dessert. Never mind that. Something happened this morning. Mm -hmm. Something important. Hurry, tell me. I, um, I got the raise. Ten dollars? Ten whole dollars, honey. Count them. Ten. A week? Fifty-two weeks in the oh. year. <laughs> Shine, mister? Beat it, will you, Sonny? I'm busy. How are you going to get anywhere with a dame with shoes like that? Well, I'm doing just fine, thank you. Now run along, will you? Okay, you wouldn't look like a slob. <laughs> you look great to me. That's what I've been waiting to hear. But you know what that ten bucks means, don't you? It means the Benton Auto Supply Company knows a good man when they see one. <laughs> I wish something like that would happen to me. Look, honey, this is what we've been waiting for. You can quit your job. We can get that apartment we were looking at. We don't have to wait any longer. And listen. Listen. You and I have been going together long enough. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> well? We'll tell Mother and Dad tonight. You can come to dinner. Oh, honey, couldn't... Couldn't you just tell them? You know what'll happen. I'll just get to the point and your dad'll start talking about geometry and, and I'm dead. I'll tell you what. You go in and soften him up first, and then I'll come in later. Oh, don't worry about him, darling. It's just that, well, he's a teacher, and I he takes things seriously. I know your dad, and believe me, he'll blow. Oh. You will come to dinner, won't you? We're going to have fried chicken, and I'm going to make the gravy. Oh, brother. No, we leave everything on the table. <laughs> it isn't every night we have you children with us. As I was saying, if you see the And will you help like, me with this? Oh, sure. Our young people have their minds on so many might. other things okay. these days. Gee, it's a fresh cut. Isn't it lovely? You know, I was going to get is, greener than I thought. Well, as I was saying, my students may not like me, but I try to gain their respect. Uh, yes, sir, I, I understand. Well, after all, it's quite important. Yes, of course. Uh, 
you were a student of mine uh, once, James, Geometry One. <clears throat> Did you suffer? Well, uh, no, sir, uh, not much. Uh, just at the end. At the end? Well, yes, you flunked me. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. Uh, but I'm a lot brighter now, sir. Well, of course you are, dear. Yes, yes, he's, uh, he's so bright that uh, he got a raise. Yes, I'm up to 90 a week now, sir. I'll let you in on an open secret, Jim. You earn more than I do. Well. However, I suppose there are compensations, like watching Anne grow up. If she could only have gone to college. Well, college is all right, Mr. Walton, but there are other things. You know, I always wanted Anne to become a teacher. There's a crying need for young people to replace us older educators. Overcrowded schools, classes too large, and showed great promise in high school, especially in mathematics. Yes, but there are other things, Mr. Walton. For instance? Well, like marriage. Marriage? Mr. Walton, I'm sure it comes as no great surprise. I want to marry Anne. But this is wonderful. When had you planned it? Right away. Oh. I don't want Stella Carter or some other female to steal him away from me. Oh, oh Jim, there's nobody in the world I'd rather have for a son than you. Oh, Daddy, don't look so sad. Only one woman to henpeck you. You're both very young for marriage. Oh, no, we're not, Daddy. Really, we're not. Anne, come here. I want to hug both of you. <laughs> well, congratulations, Jim. A long, happy life together. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, Anne. Well, aren't you the happy little worker this morning? Oh, I certainly am. Any particular reason? Mm-hmm. There's 60 million men in this country, and I found the right one. Don't be so sure. Hi, Andy. Hi. Hi. How about lunch today with Evie and me? Oh, I can't. I got a date. It seems to me you have a date just about every day. Well, I do, but this one is a special day. Why? I'm going to have a finger fitted. Which one? This one. Oh, Anne, I'm so excited. Let's sneak out later and have coffee and talk about it. Okay. Oh. Congratulations. Thanks. Did Stella try to hook you for overtime work? She not only tried, but did. <laughs> it's all right. Jim's working late anyhow. Mm -hmm. We better get back. What's the hurry? You're the one who's getting married. I need my job. <laughs> A cup of coffee, please. How about a cup of coffee? Beautiful.
Tell me what's happened to you. And what's the matter? Tell me what's the matter to you. How is she? She needs a good night's rest. I've given her a mild sedative. This is Dr. Hoffman. Sergeant Hendricks and Mrs. Miller of police headquarters. They're here to see Anne. Hmm, but the girl's in a state of shock. Couldn't you wait until tomorrow? Well, if we could learn where it happened, get a full description of the man, we might be able to pick him up tonight. Oh, I don't believe she's in any condition. But I suppose you have to. 
Mrs. Miller, would you go up, please? You'd better get some sleep, Eric. There's nothing you can do. Please don't worry. I'll stay here. I'll stand by upstairs. Tonight, my daughter was brutally attacked. Why don't you do something about preventing crimes like these? We try to do all we can, but we're only dog catchers. We pick up cases like this every day, slap them in jail. After that, I don't know what happens. I don't make the laws, I only enforce them. As soon as we get some facts from your daughter, we'll go right to work. Is this why you raise a daughter? Is this what you love and sacrifice for? What kind of times are these that such things can happen? Only this morning she was carefree and happy and now... Sorry. That's all right. Go ahead. When did you first notice the man following you? When did you first notice him? I kept walking. Faster and faster. Couldn't get away. I couldn't get away. What did he look like? Can you tell me what he looked like? I never saw his face. Only the scar on his neck. The leather jacket kept moving closer. I couldn't move. I couldn't move. How tall was he, dear? Take you away! Please, no more. Get Dr. Hoffman. And you must eat something. They're all staring at this house. They're whispering. All day they've been looking up. And people are sorry about what happened. I'm going back to work tomorrow. They want us to let them have a good look. Jim's been here twice. He called again a little while ago. He wants to come over. No. I can't see him. Oh, but dear, I don't want to see him. Police round up suspects an unsolved Walton case. How is she? She's nearly ready. I wish she wouldn't go to work today, I'm afraid. Eric, it's something she wants to do. She says she has to face it sometime. Yes, I guess she'll have to face the same thing I did yesterday. My classes, they stared at me as though I was some kind of curiosity. It was a nightmare. Even some of the other teachers looked at me as if I had done something. I wish she'd let me drive her to work. Eric, let her do as she wants. Oh, oh good morning, morning darling. Anne, are you sure you don't want me to drive you? No. I'll be fine. Be sure to call me at noon, dear.
a nice dress you've got on. Thanks. How are your mother and father? They're fine. That's good. Oh. <laughs> Nobody's staring at you. Come on, let's go get a drink of water. Walton. I'd like you to come to headquarters. We picked up some men. It won't do you any good. I didn't see his face. I'm sorry. You'll have to come along. Have a seat. Take your time, Miss Walton. Carefully. Scar. Left profile. Right profile. That look like him, Miss Walton? I don't know. Next. Scar. Left profile. Right. How about him? I can't remember. Next. Left profile. Right. Is that the man, Miss Walton? I can't remember. I can't. That's all right. Take your time. I don't know. I can't. I can't. Try to concentrate, Miss Walton. Try to remember. We don't want this man on the streets tonight. Try to remember. That looked like the man, Miss Walton. Let's see the scar. How about him? Try to remember. Next. Scar. Next. Try to remember. Right. Left. Right. Scar. Left. Left. Right. Try to remember. Next. Right. Scar. Left. Right. Left. Next. Scar. Right. Left. Please, she's had enough. 
That's all. Look, nothing matters except us. You know that, don't you? We'll get married this weekend. I've got it all planned. There's a little place over the state line. And I'm asking you to marry me now. Or didn't you hear me? Yes, I heard. Well? No! Anne, wait! Married right away. I want you. I want to live with you. I want to have kids with you. We can be happy like other people. We're not like other people. I don't want to get married ever. I don't want you to touch me. Everything's dirty, filthy, and dirty. And listen, we can live away from here, somewhere else, if that would help. Sure. You've seen them staring at me, wondering, talking. Yes, we could run, but not far enough. Shut up. And you'd always be thinking about what happened. You'd never forget. Shut up! Here you are, sir. Los Angeles in return. Where to, please? Los Angeles. Round trip? Round trip? Are you coming back?
time, a special subcommittee headed by Assemblyman Ralph Andrews was named to investigate the condition of harbor facilities in San Francisco. At San Pedro, dredging operations will continue in the west channel of Los Angeles. Hold outside, Andy. As a further bid to keep Coffee, the South please. Metropolis number Black. one shipping center on the west coast. And at Lake Success today, prospects look brighter for agreement on new measures coming before the United Nations Assembly. The police of four states continued their search for pretty Ann Walton, victim of a criminal attack. Miss Walton disappeared from her home in Capital City 36 hours ago. Her family fears she may be suffering from a temporary mental lapse as a result of a vicious assault on her last Tuesday night. And now we return you to our nightly platter parade with a South American rumble. You won't go far on that foot. You're among friends. You're at the Harrison Ranch. I'm sure you can stay here tonight. You'll be all right. No, I... I must be going. You can get a lift down to the bus stop tomorrow. My name is Bruce Ferguson. Mine's... Ann Blake. Where were you going when I found you? I don't know. Los Angeles, I guess. Can I help you in any way? Well, I see she's awake. Oh, this is Mrs. Harrison. Hello. Take a sip of this. You'll feel better. I think she sprained her ankle. I'll take care of it. Fine. I'll leave you two alone. Well, take that shoe off and look at your foot. There you go. Oh, hello, 
Tom. Sorry I missed the excitement, Doc. The girl only has a sprained ankle. Madge did an expert job of taping it up. Did you find out anything about her? Not very much, I'm afraid. Except she's a frightened kid. Says she's on her way to Los Angeles. Where's she from? I don't know. Maybe you better report it to the police. Oh, I don't think it's that serious. Of course, if you'd rather I took her with me. No. Let her stay here for now. We'll put her on the bus in the morning. You're really one, Doc, for picking up strays. Well, I guess that's part of my job. When are you going to put some tobacco in that pipe here? No, thanks. I uh, just like to chew on it. <laughs> well, night. Good night, Doc. Oh, uh, thanks for being so hospitable. Good night. Good night, Bruce. Say, Doc, about uh, church next Sunday, I'll be there if I can catch up on my accounts. Yeah. I'll believe that when I see it. So long. So long. an orange packing plant before? Well, you're seeing one at the height of the season. Just one of the new packers? No, just a guess. He's leaving when the bus gets here. Too bad, boss. We're gonna be two packers short today. A couple of girls quit. Well, it's more. I'm trying. But there are other ranchers hiring, too. What do packers do? They work in there. Wrapping and crating. It's easy. Pays 18 cents a box. You can make a buck and a quarter an hour. Interested? I don't know. In that case, you're hired. OK, boss? Well, I guess so. There's a rumor that a man can get an orange in this place. Oh. Thank you. You know, I didn't expect to find you here. Glad you decided to stay around. How do you like it? It's all right. You're new at this kind of work, aren't you? What'd you do before? I was a secretary bookkeeper. Does Tom Harrison know that? You know, you'd be more help in the office than around here. Don't bother. I'll be leaving in a few days. Well, they might even let you stay in Louise's room. That's their daughter. She's married now. No, I can't stay here. Los Angeles? I guess so. Your family live there? Are you sure I can't help you? No, but... No, but... But thank you for everything you've done. Mr. Harrison called you Doc. Are you a doctor? Yes, I'm a doctor. Perhaps not the kind you're thinking of. 
Not in these clothes, anyway. I have a little church in Santa Paula. I've... I've got to get my lunch. Excuse me. Jen, anybody home? Hide the cards, Lee. It's the vicar himself. Hello, Tom. Doc. Relax, Lee. It's a good game, Rummy. <laughs> I'm not so sure. I'm losing. <laughs> well, how are you, Madge? Fine, Bruce. How about a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Well, where's Ann? Out in the office. Well, working on Saturday afternoon? She's always working. Wasn't my idea, Doc. She just wants to work. I can't stop her. But she's got all my books in order. Tell me, Bruce. Have you found out anything more about Anne? No, not very much. I hope it's all right, her working in the office, handling the payroll money. She seems all right, but I was hoping you'd accept her. But if you don't want to, I'll find some other way of helping her. Now, take it easy, Doc. Your word's good enough for me. Thanks. Oh, uh, by the way, save me a seat next Sunday. How's everything going? Oh, fine. I like it here. Thanks for getting me the job. Tom Harrison doesn't beat you, does he? <laughs> Feeds you enough? <laughs> He's nice. Don't you think you ought to close down the books for today? After all, I didn't sell you into slavery, you know. Oh, I I've got lots to do. No, it's too nice a day for this sort of thing. I'm going to a little place that I know. Do some sketching. Thought maybe you'd like to come along for the ride. No, I don't think so. You've no idea how peaceful it is. I go there every Saturday. Better than a column of figures, huh? Oh, it's pretty. I used to roam for miles over this part of the country when I was a boy. This is my favorite place. I waited for the buffalo to come down to graze. But they never did. <laughs> That's because there were no buffalo. Come on now, I've got a little hideaway to show you. This is my secret hiding place. You know, whenever I'd done anything wrong, I used to come scampering up that hill there like a scared rabbit and hide you. Then I'd get hungry and start getting late, and I'd sneak back home. Come on, let's sit down. Thanks. May I see the sketch? It's good. It's only half finished. Yeah. Have you always lived here? I was born in Santa Paula. My father was in the church, too. He was transferred to Philadelphia when I was 10. It took me 25 years to get back here. You see, I was looking for something. It's hard to put into words. 
you might call it faith. Sometimes it's difficult to hold on to. You mean you stop believing? We all go through dark times. Mine was a year in the hospital after the war. You see, I was in the, the Navy, Navy chaplain, Italy. Wound up with one lung, TB. But the thing that hurt the most was being told I couldn't go back to my church. There was so much I wanted to do. So you came back here? Uh-huh. Feeling pretty sorry for myself. You know, I shouldn't be telling you this. Ministers of the church aren't supposed to waver or doubt. But being human, we do. Do you know something else? When I came back to this valley where I'd been so happy as a boy, I found it as lovely as ever. I looked deep down in myself, and then up at the sky. Suddenly, I found myself. My faith it was the most wonderful feeling I'd ever known. Sorry to have gone on like this. But I wanted you to know that you're not alone. I'll never forget this place. Not as long as I live. And we all need help sometimes. I want to help you. truckloads ready to go. That's the way I figure it. Well, I'll go and check. Good. Where have you been, Doc? Thought oh. you'd given us up for heathen. I've been kind of busy. We're going up in the world. Bishop paid me a visit last week. Wanted to know if I was strong enough to take a church up north. What did you tell him? I told him not yet that I had some work to do here. Meaning me, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, meaning you. Just keep on needling me, Doc. Now, look, next Sunday for sure. All right. You know, I believe in miracles. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Say, what have I done? You haven't done anything. How are you? Hi, sir. Dr. Ferguson? You know, I can vouch for both of you. <laughs> Put on any new help lately? Well, a few more pickers. Uh, mostly people have been around here for years. I'm sorry, Sheriff. This is Anne. Anne Blake. You're new here, young lady. Kind of shy, isn't she? Tom, come on in the office. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Oh, Tom, just a moment. I'd like to come along. She hasn't turned up here. Lee's looked everywhere on the ranch. I was kind of getting used to her here in Louise's room. Yes, I know. Please let me hear if you find her. Bye.
nice, isn't it? One of the boys on my ship wrote it. I'm glad you didn't do anything foolish, Anne. The sheriff wasn't looking for you. How about some coffee? Yes, please. I'll get a cup. Sit down. My name isn't Blake. No? I ran away from home. I had to. Don't you think you ought to let your family know where you are? No. I want to stay here. And we all have to stop running sometime. We have to face ourselves, then look at the world all over again. You know, that second look after heartache shows up some wonderful things. Oh, come on, let me see you smile. That's better. You know, Saturday is our big harvest dance. We always have lots of fun. You will come, won't you? I like it. Don't worry. I'll be there. Guess I better take you back to the ranch. Let me taste that stuff. So why can't you make punch like that? I did. <laughs> oh, hello, Lee. This is about your fifth time around, isn't it? I've got an awful thirst. You know, this is pure orange juice, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> hello, Marilyn. Joseph. Congratulations on the addition of the family. Some punch? There you are. Enjoy yourselves. Pretty one. Think you could put up with me for the next waltz? I don't like to dance. Don't. Oh, come on. Look, just one little waltz. No, let me go.
don't. Why do you wear it this way? It's so pretty when it's undone. Get away from me. You know, ever since you came to this place, I wanted to do this. You're beautiful. No. What's the matter with you? I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to kiss you. Is that bad? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Afraid Bruce Ferguson might find out? Don't. Don't! He's kept you pretty much of a secret, hasn't he? We'd all like to know where you came from and why. Don't! 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 Don't run! You're what? Why can't I kiss you? You're the prettiest girl around here. Let's go back now. They're waiting for you. Yeah. All right, thanks. Do you think you take an awful long chance sometimes? How many of these characters you collect? What'd you find out? They traced her through the Missing Persons Bureau on a hunch, and it paid off. Name's Ann Walton. She's been missing from home for a couple of months. A victim of a criminal assault. Go on. 
Mr. Bellow. Look, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Frank's lying over at the hospital in bad shape. He might not pull through. Even if he does, she's in trouble. Can I see her? I guess so. I'll go with you. to try to kill Frank. I've known him for a long time. He meant you no harm. I could see him coming closer and closer. And I screamed. I could see the scar on his neck. I could feel a leather jacket. But Frank doesn't have a scar on his neck. He wasn't wearing a leather coat. Yes. A leather coat. Once I got away from him. And he couldn't find me behind one of the trucks. But there weren't any trucks. Not at the dance. You picked up a wrench. And... He wore a leather coat. Now I think I understand. You are innocent. So awfully innocent. I pray to God they'll understand that. Frank Marini was strong enough to sign this affidavit this morning. I must say your friend Marini is a forgiving man. A very unusual document. Mr. Marini's refusal to press charges against Miss Walton has not altered the facts. She almost murdered a man. Judge, Mr. Porter, I'm not a lawyer or a psychiatrist, except as a man's religious faith allows him to look into the heart and mind of another. Are we all agreed that Miss Walton was suffering from a form of temporary insanity? Yes. Anne has been suffering in her mind a long time, ever since she was the victim of a vicious criminal attack. The kind that's a shameful blot on our towns and cities. What happened here began two months ago in Capital City. An evil chain reaction, which deluded Anne to believing that Frank Marini was the man who attacked her. This morning I called Capital City. The police told me that they'd found the man two days ago. He was arrested while attempting an armed robbery. Later he confessed to the assault on Anne. They arrested him? Yes, Anne. That still doesn't answer the charge against Miss Walton. This man, this criminal, has spent half of his life, half of his life, in reform schools or prisons for acts of violence. He was always punished, but he was never treated as a neurotic individual, never treated as a sick man. So he was released uncured. And Anne Walton was the victim of his fury. I regret that such men are turned back on society, but this hearing's concerned with Miss Walton's innocence or guilt. That's my point. She is innocent of criminal intent, and we are guilty of criminal negligence. It's our fault, all of us. Our generation has produced too many neuroses, too many mentally displaced people right here at home. We need, we need more hospitals, more clinics, more trained men to turn human scrap back into useful human beings. Mr. Porter, I appeal to you as a man, not as a prosecutor. I'd like you to ask the judge to dismiss the complaint against Ann Walton. Your Honor, I... I 
hereby move that the complaint against Miss Walton be dismissed. Before I can render a decision, there's one question that must be answered. What assurance do we have that Miss Walton's temporary delusions may not return? Wouldn't it be better if she were placed for treatment in a proper institution until pronounced fit to resume a normal life? I don't know. But I feel that Anne needs people who love her as much as she needs psychiatric treatment. The court recognizes your generous feelings, but cannot accept your testimony as that of an expert witness. This hearing will be adjourned until such time as a competent psychiatrist can examine Miss Walton. Why don't they just take me away and lock me up? Anne, don't ever give up hope. I don't know. Maybe I am crazy. Sometimes I feel as if the whole world is upside down. Judge said we wouldn't have to wait very long. You're the only one that can help me. Why don't they understand? Why? Miss Walton, the examining psychiatrist says you are still far from well, but he does not believe institutional care is required. He does, however, strongly recommend that you receive psychiatric treatment for a period of at least one year. I will favorably consider a motion for dismissal, providing Dr. Ferguson guarantee the court that Ms. Walton will undertake the necessary treatment. I'll gladly accept responsibility. You'll have a written report from a psychiatrist the first of every month. Ms. Walton, good luck. Good luck. Thank you. It's so lovely. And I make it sound so awful. I could still recognize it. I talked to your mother and father. When? While you were saying goodbye to Frank at the hospital. I told them everything was all right with you now. They wanted to come and get you. They love you more than you know. Must I go home now? Oh, please. Please let me stay here with you, near you. Jim's waiting, too. He mustn't wait. Not for me. You loved him, didn't you? And he loved you. You'll find it still that way. But, but I could help you here. Mr. Harrison might let me stay on. Things might be difficult at first, I know. But you'll find your way. I'll never forget you. You've made me very happy. Made you happy? Why, you're needing me? By watching you get ready to start life all over again. Then you don't want me to stay. Is that it? You've a life to go back to. I have a job to do. One of these days, I'll be leaving here, too. No one can turn their backs on what they're meant to do. People who mean something to each other never say goodbye. Not really. I suppose that's because they're never completely apart. No matter how many miles or years separate them. Then I will see you sometime. Of course. For friends, true friends, it's a very small world. You tell Jim for me, he's a lucky fellow. And why are you crying? Because you understand everything. You understand me. Nearly five. We'd better be going or we'll miss the bus.
do any minute. And you're going to have a wonderful, happy life, aren't you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You'll only have about an hour's wait in Los Angeles. And you'll be on your way east. Thank <laughs> you. 